here we have the results of doing a PCA on the demographic data. First we show only the score values, so we have a score plot. And on the axis you can see how well these two scores describe the data. In this case we are explaining 74% of the data, so that's quite good for data like this. And that means that any interpretation that we make in terms of this plot will be descriptive for 74% of the variation in the data. And of course the first thing we note is that there are two countries that are very different from the other ones. And that means we have actually already answered one of the initial questions. If we want to see what samples are most different or most strange, well that has to be Singapore and Hong Kong. We don't know exactly why they are, but they are clearly different from the other ones. This is an example of outlier detection. Singapore and Hong Kong are outliers. Outliers meaning that they are different from the bulk of the data. In PCA we often, though not always, assume that our samples come from a certain distribution uh, not necessarily an easily statistically described one, but at least that the samples are similar in nature. But in this case we can see that PCA is not really modeling the variation among all the samples, but it seems that it's rather modeling whether we have Singapore or Hong Kong or not. And that's usually not what we want to do with a PCA. We want to describe the common um, phenomena in the data not individual peculiarities. So, in a simple score plot like this, we already get an indication of whether a sample is an outlier. And this is exactly how it's used, for example, to detect whether a process is running appropriately or whether the process is going out of control. When we have detected samples like that, like Singapore and Hong Kong, or outliers in general, we want to understand why they are outliers. And the loadings will tell us what the reason is for these samples being located where they are. The loadings provide us the information about the variables, and we can put them on top of the score plot to get the biplot that we also saw before. And if we do that, then we have all the 49 samples plus the seven variables in one plot. And the interpretation is exactly as explained earlier. So we can now see that Singapore and Hong Kong are special because their population density is very different from all the other ones. The population density also differs in the other samples, but not to the extent that it does for Singapore and Hong Kong. So not only do we get information that Singapore and Hong Kong are outliers, we also get an explanation for why they are. And in this case, we would probably say, let's remove Singapore and Hong Kong, because they are really disturbing the analysis. An important note here is that you will realize that Singapore and Hong Kong are not incorrect samples. They are not wrongly measured. They are simply just extreme, and they don't fit together with the other ones. And the decision as to whether they should be excluded from the analysis or not that has to come from your knowledge about the problem, whether you need to have a model that describes everything, or whether you want to describe only the major part of the data. Quite a number of things can be seen for this specific model. If you look at the scores and the loadings, you see, for example, that all the variables are quite important, because no individual variable is located near 0, 0, 0. 0.0. If there had been a variable at 0, 0.0 or close to that, that would mean that that variable was not consistent with the major part of the variation in the data. We also see that many variables are correlated. For example, the gross national product and the number of students, those two variables are located close to each other, and that means that they contain more or less the same information. So, for example, if one was very expensive, we could say 
let's take the other one and exclude the expensive one in order to save some money and we won't lose much information by doing that. We can also see that the gross national product is oppositely located to for example infant death and that means that countries with a high gross national product will have a low infant death. We can also see for example for the samples that in India is located in the lower left part and that means that they have the most serious health problems whereas USA is the country that has the highest economical factors. If we look at the PCA plot when we have excluded Singapore and Hong Kong it's easier to see the different details in the data. And now we can start to look more detailed into the patterns, into what countries are grouped together for example and we can make some quite interesting observations. When we look at the data we can see that well we have a health direction and a money direction those are names that we could attach to the Indian uh, direction and the USA direction. But we also have a third direction and in this case we can call it an island direction. We see that we have small islands uh, mainly in that direction. So even though this may not be the best example, this does show us how we can do exploratory analysis and that is that we can learn something from the data. In many traditional types of data analysis we are usually trying to do hypothesis testing. So we have an initial hypothesis, we generate data to verify or reject that hypothesis. In this case we are not doing that. We are taking a data set that we believe is relevant for describing some problem, we analyze the data and now we actually see and learn something new from the data. Something that we hadn't thought of but which is empirically observed to be in the data. So we see that we can generate hypotheses directly from the data and that's exploratory data analysis. We also, by the way, get an answer to the other questions question that we posed initially which country in Europe is most similar to Japan? Well we can see that that would be the Netherlands or Belgium. And You see that those two questions that we posed initially which were quite difficult to answer from the data table are very very simple to answer when we actually just look at the plots. Another strong feature in this visual approach is the use of markers. In this case we have exchanged the sample names with colors and we use colors for poor and rich countries and then it was a little bit unclear where the Eastern European countries should be positioned so we used a specific color for the Eastern European samples. And you can see here that as expected the leftmost countries would be the ones which are poor and the rightmost pointing in the economical direction would be the ones that are rich. And the Eastern European countries are in the middle of this, sort of going from poor to rich. If you have external knowledge about your data, you can have many types of external knowledge, different batches, different groups, different whatever. Well you can use that external information when you do your plotting and that can help you detect groupings in your data that would otherwise not be simple to detect. And this is a very useful, um, a useful approach when you have large data sets or you have many types of variation expected in your data. Until now we just visually looked at the PCA model but it is important to note that it is a quantitative method and you can have numbers out for all the different aspects of the model. You get scores, you get loadings and residuals. The loadings define the new coordinate system 
defines the plane in case we have two components. So each loading is a direction in space with numbers associated to it. And the score is then simply the amount of that artificial latent variable for a particular sample. So for every sample we have a score value for every principal component. And you can extract all these numbers and use them, use them in further analysis for clustering, calibration or whatever. So this initial example hopefully has shown that it is possible to handle many variables simultaneously in a rational way. And also that you will get more information by doing that instead of looking at the variables one by one. And that means that you can overview, diagnose, monitor, predict, classify, even having complex data. And it also means that you can learn about a problem from data describing the problem. You do not need to know everything beforehand and in the extremist case you do not even need to have an hypothesis. If you have data that describes a problem you can look into those and see if there's any useful information about your problem.